In this lecture, we will discuss compartment modeling. We will examine each of these modeling systems and then attempt to apply them. Most lay people will comprehend the idea that the effects of a drug are dose dependent. If we give the appropriate amount, we get the effect we want. If we give too much, then it becomes harmful. They might also appreciate that the drug is removed by some means, meaning that another dose has to be administered. Medical students will know that a drug is administered into the body, spreads out all across the body, and is simultaneously removed by organs such as the liver and the kidney. The effects of the drug will therefore vary between patients, depending on the size and the rate of removal. This can be modeled according to sequel compartment washout curves, as we have seen in previous lectures. However, we learn in anesthetic pharmacology that it is more appropriate to consider the body as comprising several compartments with differing behaviors. Here is a two compartment model with a central compartment and a single peripheral compartment. The model gives rise to a bi-exponential decay curve with a distribution phase and a terminal elimination phase. During the distribution phase, there is a rapid fall in plasma concentration due to both distribution from the central compartment into the peripheral compartment, that is, from V1 into V2, as well as metabolism or excretion of the drug altogether. Here is a three compartment model with a central compartment V1, a vessel rich compartment V2, and a vessel poor peripheral compartment V3. Note that vessel rich does not necessarily mean muscle, and vessel poor does not necessarily mean fat. Note that the exponential decay curve that corresponds to this model is represented as the tri-exponential decay curve and the y-axis is usually log transformed so that each of the individual components of that graph can be represented as a straight line. The kinetics of volatile anesthetics has been described using a five compartment model or a four compartment model. That is, there is a vessel rich group a lean group, also called a muscle group, an intermediate group, which is thought to be the uh, fat surrounding very well perfused viscera like the heart and the kidneys, a vessel poor group uh, containing tissues like cartilage, which are poorly perfused, and a fat group. This is the equation that describes the rate of equilibration of a tissue compartment. You will see this equation in the chapter on inhaled anesthetic kinetics in Millis. It's very useful to understand it. If we consider each of the components of this equation, then it makes good sense. Capital tau, the T, is time constant. V is volume. Lambda is the partition coefficient. Q is the rate of blood flow. A larger compartment has a greater capacity for uptake. Therefore, it will be slower to equilibrate. Therefore, it will have a longer time constant. And therefore, V is on the top line. A compartment with a high partition coefficient will have a greater capacity for uptake, therefore it will be slower to equilibrate, and therefore it will have a long, longer time constant. And so lambda is on the top line. We can consider the numerator of this equation to represent the, t the capacity for uptake of that tissue. On the other hand, a compartment with a high blood flow rate will equilibrate more quickly, therefore the time constant is shorter, therefore Q belongs on the bottom line. I have been told that in the US Navy, modeling of gas particles was performed up to the level of detail of 23 compartments. However, pharmacokinetic studies of drug behavior indicate that using more than three compartments doesn't make a significant difference. I should mention that while these models are very useful, they are nonetheless models. The body has many different tissues, and no two of them are the same. Even homologous tissues don't behave in the same way necessarily. For instance, after administering a muscle relaxant, adductor pollicis is slower to be paralyzed than the larynx because it receives a lower rate of blood flow. There will be more discussion of this in the presentations to follow on the kinetics of intravenous infusions and target controlled infusions. Last, I'd like to use the compartment model to illustrate the mechanism of decompression sickness, otherwise known as the bends. The first question is, why does the bends come about? The answer goes like this. During descent, 
ambient pressure goes up. Partial pressure of nitrogen, oxygen, and anything else in the air goes up. There are now partial pressure gradients for each of these gases to enter the body. More oxygen gets into blood, more oxygen gets into the heart, more oxygen gets into the brain, and more oxygen gets into the joints. It's the same with nitrogen. As is the case at sea level, some of these molecules will be in the gaseous phase and others will be dissolved into body tissues. Our diver now ascends towards sea level and let's say he or she does so quickly. On the way up, ambient pressure goes down. Partial pressure of nitrogen, oxygen and anything else in the air goes down. There is now a partial pressure gradient for the gases to leave the body. Now, oxygen is relatively soluble and equilibrates quickly. Nitrogen, on the other hand, is incredibly insoluble and equilibrates very slowly. As ambient pressure falls, it escapes from solution into the gaseous phase. If enough gas accumulates, then bubbles will form and these will cause pain. The second question is, why does the bends so commonly affect the joints? The answer can be explained in terms of compartment modelling with reference to the equation that we learnt before. The vessel pore group, thought to comprise joint tissues among other things, is what it says it is, vessel pore. In fact, its blood supply is even lower per unit mass of tissue than that of fat. That would ordinarily make it the slowest tissue to reach equilibrium during anaesthesia, but the extraordinarily high solubility of anaesthetics in adipose and the large volume of adipose means that the vessel pore compartment is instead the second slowest to equilibrate. Nitrogen bubbles will form everywhere during decompression. It's just that in joint tissue, the rate of removal by the circulation is so slow that large bubbles are able to form. In summary, compartment models are used to model drug infusions and other things. Three compartments are sufficient, or at least that's the level of detail that we've been able to use successfully. And we'll discuss these concepts more in the lectures to follow.